Why do we only have one topic for today? This isn't like y'all. Y'all usually give me three or four. What's going on? Today is gonna be a very special video. The time has come, the shake it up analysis. You've been hyping this one up for weeks. It better be good. Are you guys threatening me? Are you guys threatening me? Oh, it will be good. It will be better than good. It will be great. It will be exceptional. Like China and McLean said, exceptional. Don't catch no attitude with me. Remember, I am the captain, even though I'm out of focus right now. <laughs> What's your problem? No one will play with me here. Nobody likes me. <sighs> okay, Jasmine. What uh what what do you want to play? House? Gone with the wind. Ah, oh, please no. She's giving crocodile hunter today. I don't know why the crocodile hunter didn't wear a cowboy hat? I don't know, that's just what I'm giving. But hey y'all, it's Harriana and I'm back with another video. Welcome to the pirate ship, also known as Harry Hook's pirate ship. Always remember, I am the captain. You ain't my first mate. I don't got no first mate. How many times we gotta go over this? No one's worthy of being the first mate. Got second, got three seconds, got a third, got a fourth, got a fifth. Got a twelfth, got a thirteenth. No one's worthy of being first. And if you think you're the first mate, Especially if I don't know you, you're not. Hello, y'all. This is your first time ever seeing me. Hello, my name is Hariana, and I like to make content based off nostalgia and family and children's entertainment and all the issues that I find within those spaces. Now, today is a very, 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 very special video. Like, I've been working on this video since, like, December, and it had to do a lot of rewrites and whatever but it is finally here the shake it up analysis has finally arrived okay just a little quick announcements before we dive right into the video y'all know i always got to do my little commercial break i always got to do my little advertisements one my merch harry on hook please go support summer collection is coming june 1st 2021 i am launching a regrets collection i have this cute color right here called Susie Carmichael focus there you go but yeah I have this really really cute brown color called Susie Carmichael I'm wearing it right now yeah you will be able to purchase this then I also am wearing my hook necklace so many of you guys love this necklace so I was like you know what why don't I sell it we can be twinning so yeah HarryAnnaHook.com, that's my store. Go shop, please. I have a Patreon, please go support that. You get a lot of exclusive behind the scenes content about what I do in my day to life life. You get the behind the scenes videos, you get access to my Discord. Last but not least, support my web series called The Progenies. Pilot just came out. No, the pilot been out. The trailer just came out for the new episode. So yeah, can't wait to share that with y'all. Now let's go ahead and get into it. I am super duper duper sorry that it took me so long to get this video out. Okay, it's just been a lot going on. I I know y'all don't care. I had a really, really bad major depressive episode that I'm still suffering through at the moment, but it's okay, it's okay. I finally feel well enough to make it today. I've been super duper busy with working at my other job. I'm just so tired. But here it is. That's all that matters. I ain't gonna be breaking down. Shake it up. If you understood that reference, you're great. Now, if you've been following me for a minute, you are aware of the fact that I have mentioned numerous times on this channel that Shake It Up is one of my favorite shows ever. And people be looking at me like, that's really one of your favorite shows? And I'm like, yeah, and it ain't none of your freaking business why it's my favorite show. But anyway, let's go ahead and get into it. I will explain why is it my favorite show. And I've been really wanting to do something special with this video, okay? I was like, this video has to be like no other video that I've done because this show means so freaking much to me me so you know what 
I tried something, I stepped out of my comfort zone because I still can't believe I did it. I am proud of myself that I did it. I was re-watching the show probably for about the third time as I was working on this analysis and it is one particular name that I always noticed came up in the writer credits. As you guys know, I am an aspiring writer. I post a lot of my work on Wattpad and in my web show, you guys will be able to see a lot of my writing and I noticed that one particular name was always in the credits for writing. So I sent her an email and <laughs> my name is jenny lee um i am a writer uh, or i was a writer on uh shake it up uh the disney channel shake it up i was on for the entire three seasons like every episode except for the pilot i mean the pilot normally gets filmed first so i wasn't there but i was there for the reshoots um which was one of my best tv writing and producing experiences um i was a young writer there myself and i am also an author um my first young adult uh, novel, Anna Kay, came out last year in March, uh, a week before the pandemic, just in time to cancel my entire book tour, which is all <laughs> fun, obviously, because the pandemic's the pandemic. Um, but my second book, um, the sequel to Anna Kay, comes out this month, April 27th. I had the pleasure of interviewing Jenny Lee, one of the writers and producers of Disney Channel Shake It Up, okay? I mean it when I told y'all I wanted to do something super duper special with this video. I really wanted to do something that makes y'all go, damn, the captain really is that bitch. She really is that girl, okay? And here we go. Let's dive into Shake It Up. A mature look at it okay i mean it when i say that you guys are gonna look at this show completely different after you finish this video before we get into the shake it up analysis i do want to give um jenny her props because jenny amazing writer she wrote the best-selling novel anna k and its sequel that recently just came out anna k away i am super duper excited to read this book because if you guys are familiar with the story of Anna Karenina, that's basically what Anna Kay is. And it reminds me a lot of Gossip Girl, Blood and Water. And y'all know I am a sucker for stories about rich people, especially rich young adults and rich adults. I love those type of stories so much. And if you're a fan of those, you will love Anna Kay, okay? And it's basically about like a rich Asian girl. We love to see it. Crazy rich Asians. We love to see it. Anna Kay Away, the sequel to Anna Kay. I am super duper excited to read this. I have not had the time to read it, but this week when I am at work, I'm going to bring it with me. And oh, I just can't wait to see what Anna is up to next in her story. So yes, I will have the link to her book down below and also the link to her website down below. Now let's go ahead and get into the video. What drew you into wanting to be a part of the behind the scenes of Shake It Up? Well, how it works um, is that I was already writing books at the time, but then I was exploring television writing. I mean, I was living in New York and then I was like, oh, I, you know, uh, here's the one thing about book writing unless the best sellers make a lot of money right the, those authors but other than that it's just like you know it's any other artistic type endeavors that you might not make that much money a lot of people i think only four percent of writers can make a living on their writing alone like oh it's wow. a very small number you know what i mean percentage because it's just hard and you know books don't sell a lot or they don't sell for a lot of money and it's a very crowded thing so i was kind of looking for like other ways to like supplement my income and i did go to nyu dramatic writing which was about tv writing and playwriting and movies but it was funny because when i was in college i was like yeah i want to write books and so I just, I ended up switching out of that program. And it's so funny that I ended up circling back um, around to go do that. Um, so I moved out to LA and started exploring TV writing. I worked on two um, shows like Samantha Who with Christina Applegate and this other one called In Case of Emergency that like got canceled. And then I got the Shake It Up job. So I was still considered a baby writer. Um, okay. So there's a staff writer and then there's like a, a story editor. So I joined Shake It Up. And it was really the best learning experience because I was sort of new to the business and multicams, which is what that is, right? Shot in front of a live audience and like, you know, friends, et cetera. Those are all multicam with multiple cameras. Um, it, you kind of do it like a play. So you think that like, 
Monday, all the cast is there, we're in a room, they do a reading of the script and we all listen, all the writers are there and we listen to it and we're like, oh, this works, that doesn't work. And then we get notes from like Disney Channel, the network, and they're like, this is what we like, this is what we didn't like. We, the writers, go back to our writer's room, rewrite the entire episode and it goes back out to all the actors. They get it that night, right? So that's Monday okay. night. And Tuesday, they have all morning to rehearse with the director because they're it's on its feet, it's on the stage now. But they have their scripts because they haven't memorized it yet. And then we go down at like in the afternoon and we watch them walk through it. And then they're kind of holding their scripts and do it's like a play and they're play acting it basically. And from there, we still decide we're like, oh, that works once it's called on its feet. It's like, oh, it's on its feet now. And we're like, eh, that scene isn't funny. This isn't working. This joke doesn't make sense. We go back to another rewrite those actors get another script that night with like wow. some changes and stuff and then the same thing happens on Wednesday but then the network shows up the Disney Channel executives will show up that afternoon and they watch it and so they have final say so of like their notes of what they like and what they don't because if they like it and it went well we're like yay great but almost always there's always another rewrite on Wednesday night wow. so then when that's done we lock the script so the script is like set so then they can really memorize everything. And then Thursday and Friday, they shoot it. They shoot half the show on Thursday without an audience to get through a lot of the scenes. And then Friday night, the, the audience shows up at like 5 p.m. And then the show starts at like six. And then they film the rest of it in front of an audience. Okay, because I was very curious to know because um, they talk about when things are filmed in front of a live studio audience. And I'm like, are they filmed in front of an audience the entire time? Like, okay. No, but what, what you'll hear though, that laughter is, you know, real because they will show the scenes they shot from the day before so that you get to watch it in order. So scenes, even if it wasn't shot in front of you, you'll the audience that's sitting up there get to watch it on screen so they know what's happening in the story. So it'll go in order of like what the episode is. So, and where the writers are on the floor on show night, you know, having to be quiet obviously when they're filming, but sometimes like we'll change jokes if the audience isn't laughing or they don't like it or they're like, oh, and they make it, then we're like, oh no. We'll literally go in and rechange those notes. So the actors are so, they were also great. They really can change a joke on the fly. You just, you know, I don't go in on stage, but like the showrunner and the director will go and approach like, say like Zendaya and be like, hey, can you try this instead? And then she'll do the next line for the audience, which the audience loves because it's fun to see them change things up like on the fly. I was so excited to be able to do my character talk with Jenny Lee. It was super duper fun. It was very, my favorite part about it is just like, I shared what I liked about the characters with her and did she share what she liked about the characters and everything like that. And I really just asked her a lot of questions about what it was like writing certain ones and how she felt about certain ones. So let's go ahead and get into character talk with Jenny Lee. Now we have started off with Cece. Um, Everybody that knows me and my feelings about Miss Cece Jones, uh, after a lot of my feelings for Cece have changed a little bit. I used to truly despise Cece, but after this last rewatch of the show, I grew to like her because in the end of the show, she actually grew and changed as a person. Because at first, I was just really annoyed with her because I was like, Cece's not learning. Cece's not dissing that in the third. Oh, Cece learned. She just didn't learn until like the last season when it was like kind of too late at that. But Cece's character just really frustrated me because it's like she wanted to do better, but she always just got sucked back into her old horrible ways, which made her character very frustrating in a sense. Like Cece Jones' character is just very frustrating. I could make a whole entire video about why her character frustrates me. But now that I am older, like when I was a kid, I really couldn't stand her because I just always thought she was there to bring down Rocky. But now that I'm older, I see that Cece just struggled a lot with her confidence and that's just what made it so difficult a lot of the times when it came to me watching the show and me wanting to root for her. Like I wanted to root for Cece, but so many of the times Cece just kind of was like I wanted to strangle her but at the same time I was like no you can't do that she's trying to do better so Cece Jones is very complex but she's fun she's a lot of fun I can tell that Bella Thorne had a lot of fun with her character how do you feel tell me why no you tell me why she frustrated and then we'll talk about it okay <laughs> okay um Cece it's just kind of like you tell her one thing and then she'll 
she'll like think about it and then she won't do it yeah. and then she'll <laughs> learn at the end right. it's just kind of like the first two seasons it's, it was a lot of that but then in the third season it really was like sticking to her like she was finally starting to get it i know i feel like the cc character really when you think about it obviously like first and foremost these shows were trying to be comedic so you need a lot of conflict to have like drama between the characters and so she was always the one who just didn't think was super stubborn thought she knew everything which is just sort of like that was her character and was a little bit you know and sassy and mouthy and like that one where rocky was the, the smarter sensible one because we kind of it's you know there's a good combination of conflict when you have two best friends who are opposites which they clearly were so we had to kind of always sort of play that up and show a little bit of slow growth and because the idea also is like you don't know how long the show is going to go and how many seasons you can't have them change too quickly in season one because then you have nowhere to go you know yeah. what i mean you have to be realistic and be like all right it takes a while for change <laughs> you know etc and she was also kind of like the ditzy her character like didn't really like stop and think and you know and take everything in so she was just kind of like act before she like thought yeah that's the perfect way to put it like she acted before she thought because it like made me so bad how she would like get rocky in trouble a lot and yes. stuff like that and i'm just like rocky why are you still friends with her like yeah. everyone always has that friend who's a troublemaker and then you're like ah oh, but they're like kind of it's also they make it they also are exciting you know what i mean it's like i don't want to be like that but it's sort of fun to like go along with that i mean it's sort of you know i feel like that was sort of the rocky attitude Next, we are getting into Miss Rocky Blue. I love her, the best character in the show, in my opinion. I love Rocky in particular because as a black girl, I really did look up to her, especially when I was in middle school as this show was on air. It was so nice to just see another girl that looked like me, even though me and Zendaya don't look that much alike, as she is biracial and very light skinned while I am monoracial and brown skinned. I think Rocky Blue is great black representation, even though she was the character that went through so much in the series. It was nice to see her just always be there for everybody. She was super, super sweet, super, super down to earth, and just an overall great person. The show did so much with Rocky, and that's also kind of like a big problem that I noticed with a lot of Disney Channel series is that so many of them don't know what to do with the black characters, and that's one thing I really do praise about shake it up is that they did a lot with her and i really love that and you guys know that i am very very big on diversity especially black girl representation on children's media and i think rocky blue is great black girl representation even though she was going through it half the time y'all know about my video i made about it but anyway I particularly love Rocky Blue. She's actually one of my favorite fictional characters from Disney Channel in general. I, I, I love Rocky. I mean, she was a great character to me. She's probably the most like me growing up because I was sort of nerdy and then I, you know, I'm Korean and I had Korean parents who were very much like, you're going to go to an Ivy League school and become a lawyer. And I knew I wanted to be a writer always since I was younger, loved books, etc. So it was a little bit like I understood her character, which is like, you're trying to please everyone. You're like, oh, I love dance. And if I want to do dance and I have to be great in all these other things because it'll get taken away. So it was a little bit of pressure. We wanted to show the reality of like teens today, you know, and sometimes it is parental pressure, but she also, that was just her personality to put a lot of pressure on herself as well, right? Because yeah. she was always like, you know, self imposed and like, uh, because it's just that she was nervous about like wanting to get everything done at the same time. And so hence then it was even better when like, Cece like up to some Cece's crazy <laughs> plan always kind of thwarted Rocky and it was just the nature, the, the dynamic of their relationship. Okay. I found it very like particularly interesting because there's an episode in the third season, the third, I'm going to get more to the third season later, yeah. but that was my favorite season. Right. I'll, I'll say why later. And there was like a particular episode where it was kind of like a flash into the future. Right. Where we kind of saw how Rocky and Cece weren't on good terms anymore and like I really did enjoy that episode because I was like, did Rocky just finally like put her foot down with Cece and she stopped getting her into trouble and things like that? Like, how was it like with that episode? I will say, I do remember that episode. I mean, yeah. it's been many years since I've written that, so I can't say I have the best recall on everything. I do remember we discussed it a long time in the room. You have to think, um, Shake It Up had either between like eight and 12 writers, depending on the season of how many people. So it's a bunch of people in a room around a table discussing this. And it was the idea that as, you know, the friends that you have when you're younger, 
aren't necessarily the friends that you have as a grown up. So we wanted to show that maybe they did like drift apart because they are so different, right? It's true yeah. that, that maybe by the time there probably was a time when Rocky was just like, yeah, I'm tired of all of Cece's antics and I have my own life and things to do and stuff. And we also like, you know, when you're looking for a story for an episode like that, you got to figure out, obviously you want it to be emotional and you want them to come back together. So if they were already friends, like where are we going to go? What are we going to talk about? You know what I mean? Um, it, it was a better thing to like learn about like what happened if they were already apart and weren't necessarily friends anymore because it's more dramatic you know you want comedy but you also want like the drama of like a relationship and emotions okay deuce okay deuce he's just a really really fun character i used to have a really fat crush on adam Aragorn. like i still have his autograph somewhere over there on my wall if i can find it i will insert it in this video okay but deuce for the most part i just thought he was a lot of fun he was just like that cute kid that was just always around rocky and cc and i used to be super duper salty that he never ended up with either rocky or cc when i was a kid but now that i'm an adult i am thankful that he didn't end up with either of them because we need to see platonic relationships on children's television sometimes people just grow up as friends and that's it no friends to lovers type story right there that's part of the reason why i had such a big issue with kim and ron getting together I understand friends to lovers, but Kim and Ron, I really just love that strong platonic relationship dynamic that they had. And I love that with Deuce, Rocky, and Cece. He didn't like them romantically. He wasn't interested in them sexually. He just clearly saw them as good friends. And that was one of the strengths of this show. I really enjoyed Deuce's character just for that particular reason. You could tell that he had great love for Rocky and Cece and he never tried to make advances and passes at them. So I really, really did enjoy that. Now we're getting into Deuce's girlfriend, Dina. Dina was, like I said, she was just a lot of fun. Deuce and Dina literally act just alike, even though Dina was like, she wore the pants in the relationship, okay? Deuce didn't know how to function without her. Let's just be real. Let's just be real. Dina ran Deuce, okay? He could not without her okay i thought they made a really really good couple when i was younger like i said my opinions on this show have changed so much as i have gotten older i used to be really really salty that D do stayed with dina the entire show's run but now that i am grown and i have grown a lot mentally i like how he just stayed with her the whole time okay and that's also one thing in particular that really bothers me because it was the main problem that i had with total drama with why they broke up trent and gwen talking about it's not realistic for like teens to stay together the whole time no i really did enjoy that deuce and dina stayed together the entire run because i think them just giving him one consistent girlfriend the entire time was able to build the chemistry between them because i noticed that Ty always had a new girlfriend every now and then and I bet it was just for comedic purposes but when it came to Deuce and Dina it also was very comedic because they were very very funny together they were hilarious some of the funniest moments from this series come from Deuce and Dina I love that they just stayed together the entire time it was very very cute and it was nice to see that they ended up getting married like a cute little high school sweetheart story right there I feel like he was just like such a sweet character, like really loyal, well-meaning, and like was just like, you know, you could always sort of depend on him and whatnot, but I love the Dina character. So I love them two together too. Like that was one of my favorite things. That actress who played Dina, I can't remember her name. Oh, um, Ainsley Hayes. I mean, she was so great. They really did have like really fun chemistry together. So that was just like a really fun storyline. And I just really like him because he was just always, loyal and i always like the friend character that's a boy but there's no romance there he wasn't ever trying for either of the girls they were just friends which i thought was nice i really love that about him like i i think it's important that television shows like strong platonic relationships between boys and girls and i really did enjoy because i was kind of salty about it because i don't know like we was talking about it was just me and my friends when we were younger. We were talking about what would it be like if Deuce got with Rocky or Cece, like comparing it. And now that I'm older, I was like, I'm actually glad he didn't get with either of them because he, he didn't show no romantic interest in them at all. But you right. can tell he genuinely did love them for who they yes, were. Yes, absolutely. Them. Right. 
Agreed. Yeah, so now you said Dina. I want to talk a little yeah. bit about Dina. When I was younger, I was like, I didn't really care too much for her, but like, right. as I rewatched it recently over the years, she's hilarious. I really yeah, do is. enjoy her. Because Dina wasn't a main cast member, right? I mean, the main cast yeah. was, you know, so she was like a special guest star, but then they, she had such good chemistry with Deuce, so we wanted to give them stories. We just thought it was like, she's pretty much like comedic relief. Like she was so funny. So that was kind of like their dynamic is, you know, really like more like what we were felt like we were enhancing the show was to give, you know, since Deuce was a, I mean, since Adam was a series regular, it's like we have to give um, him his due and like the proper amount of stories. And they were just a good team together. So it was great. Okay, now we're getting to Gunther. And then you can't talk about Gunther. You also got to talk about Tinka. I'm going to be real with y'all. I like Gunther way more than I like Tinka. Okay, Tinka was irritating. I did not like Tinka until the third season. She didn't grow on me until the third season when she became nicer, okay? Gunther was always the nice twin, in my opinion, okay? Gunther was always the one that everybody just ran to. I think it's just because Kent and Duty was just so freaking adorable. Y'all know, y'all already know I had a big crush on Gunther, I am not gonna lie. I think I just like Kitten Duty. He's just so adorable. He's also a really great guy. I still follow him on Instagram. He's also kind of funny. I see him on TikTok. But Gunther, for the most part, it's just kind of like if Gunther wasn't like overly goofy, you could tell that they would have had more potential to make him like more of a love interest. I really loved him and Cece's dynamic. I'm not gonna lie. I thought him and Cece had amazing chemistry with each other. I shipped them so hard growing up. Leave a comment down below if you ship Gunther and Cece. Please, I gotta know. I can't be the only one. I cannot be the only one, okay? I thought they just had such amazing chemistry with each other. But Tinka, for the most part, she was like the main girl of the show, which I find very particular. And one thing I really, really do enjoy about Shake It Up is because they did take the main girl and they made her like not your typical main girl that you usually see. Usually when you see the main girl, she's like all prissy and mean and you know, has the best fashion, this and that and the third. And Tinka was not that. Like, yes, she was mean, but she had the most exaggerated fashion ever. She was super duper goofy, super duper over the top. She was not your typical Hollywood mean girl. And that's one thing I really did enjoy about Tinka's character is that she was the mean girl character done differently. So, yeah. I think he was a little bit nicer because he was doing it and then Tinka was such a mean girl, do you know what I mean? So yeah. I think it was like, it was always conniving and plotting. So, I mean, but that was really like what they were designed. So, Cause you always sort of need a foil, like someone like, you know, the, not that they're total villains, but a little bit like that, right? Cause you need someone to work against because to make good television or good books or whatnot, you need drama you need conflict and because that's what life is about like there's things and like your challenges etc so there's always those friends that just sort of drive you crazy because like especially in a work you know these were two girls who were like in school but at the same time also had like kind of a job you know what i mean like an after school job and then work politics like it's never that smooth you know what i mean it's not like everyone goes to work you know you see when your parents came home and work was difficult etc you have a bad day at work i mean we wanted to make sure they had you know, challenges there for, you know, someone to like try to go up against their dreams. So now we're getting to Gary. Gary is a particular character that even though like he was more like a side character, he wasn't that important as the kids, like he was important, but you know, the show focused mainly on the kids is that Gary, for the most part, I didn't really care too much for him in season one because I thought he was just a bit rude for the most part. But then as I got older, I realized he was just kind of there to do a job. He didn't want to lose his job. He just wanted to do his job to his best of his ability. Gary really didn't start to grow on me until season two after the Shake It Up Chicago kids, like that group of kids that they've had that's been there for a while, he's been around them a lot more and you can tell that he genuinely did care about them, okay? He just didn't see them as, oh, these are just some random kids. We're just gonna get random ones later. I don't care about them. You can tell that even though they got on his everlasting nerves, Gary loved Rocky CC, even Deuce, even Dina. 
Ty and Gunther and Tinka. He loved them, okay? Even though they got on his everlasting nerve, he enjoyed those kids, okay? Because even in season three, he really wanted them to come back. He really missed working with them. Gary, for the most part, I really did enjoy his character development. He just started off as just kind of like this older and kind of mean dude to actually a really down to earth man that just enjoyed what he truly did. In the beginning, it just seems like he was just there for a paycheck, but then as time went on, you can tell he really did enjoy the community that was Shake It Up Chicago. So Gary, for the most part, I really do appreciate his character now that I'm older. So uh -huh. Gary, I, I kind of like describe him as kind of like a Ryan Seacrest type. Yes. No. <laughs> He's like a Ryan. <laughs> like, what did you guys have in mind when you wrote his character? Like, were you guys thinking of like TV show hosts and things like that? Yeah, absolutely. We were like, oh, it's just so funny that he's so vain and he's so full of himself. And he really thinks like, for him, I think when you work on a show, I mean, his own show, even though it was like a local dance show, it was everything. He was famous. He was the boss and whatnot. So it's really fun to write characters like that who kind of aren't self-aware of what they're actually like. You know what I mean? Because he's yeah. so, because you know, everyone knows people like that. And so there's a lot of humor from Gary Watt. That actor's great. He was really funny and so, you know, game for all that. And you just needed that fun host. They need a boss, you know? I mean, they're working, so you sort of need a boss. So I thought they always played so well with him. It was a really, you know, the shake it up scenes were really so fun. That was my very first episode that I wrote season one on Shake It Up was the episode about the party where they thought they were, Gary had them come to the party because he wanted them to be waitresses, but yeah. they thought he was inviting them, so they snuck out. That was my first episode that I ever wrote for Shake It Up. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Gary, he kind of did them wrong right there. Yeah, yeah, he was like... He did. <laughs> Gary. It wasn't clear, yeah. They, well, that's them, like, <laughs> thinking, like, oh, he invited us because we're fancy, but he, in his mind, he was like, oh, that's what he always meant, is that I, he needed them. He just wasn't clear, and it was like, that's why it's always, like, you know, a funny situation for them to be in. Okay, Ty, for the most part, Ty, like I said, with Deuce and Dina, Ty was just fun. He was just very, very fun. Very, very cute. I used to have a really, really big day for Sean Fagan. I even got to meet him, too. Like, my Shake It Up phase was real, y'all. My Shake It Up phase was really, really real. We're gonna get into that later though. But I did have the pleasure of meeting with Sean Fagan. Such a nice dude, super duper nice, okay? That day, I just like replay that day so much in my memory because that was just the happiest that I have been in that time period of my life. I really did appreciate that, but back to Ty, not Roshan. Ty was just really funny, okay? I think he was actually one of the funniest characters in this series. I think he was just great. I really did like it when he interacted with Deuce a lot. Him and Deuce did play off each other pretty, pretty well. And I did like his chemistry with Tinka, okay? There could have been something there, but who knows? A lot of people shipped him at the time. Yes, the Shake of the Fandom was real, y'all. Don't even get me started. The show had a big fandom. But Ty, for the most part, he was just kind of like the older brother character. Very, very supportive of his little sister. He always tried to help her with his shenanigans. For the most part, like I said, Ty, I throw him in the same category as Deuce and Dina. He was just fun. He was just a lot of fun. Flynn. Flynn is hilarious. Okay, like I said, all of the characters in this series are actually very, very funny to me. Okay, Flynn is hilarious. As you can tell, like he was in the show for the younger audience as Ty was there for the older audience. Flynn, even though I really wasn't interested in a lot of his storylines because I was a bit, I was around the same age as Rocky and Cece when the show was on air. I was more interested in what was going on with them and what was going on with Ty and Deuce and Dina than I was Flynn. But that kid is talented, okay? That kid is freaking talented, okay? I remember my friend, like one of my friends that like lives in LA, she like sent me like his like Instagram and she was like, yo, that's Flynn. I was like, wait, when did he get that big? I always saw him as like this little boy. So I found that very particular, but yeah, that kid is super duper talented. I don't really have much to say about Flynn's character. He was just your typical kid character that you see on Disney Channel, the little sibling. He's way better than Augie from Girl Beats World, okay? At least Flynn actually kind of contributed to the plot. Augie was just kind of there, okay? Y'all, me and Joe, we got that Girl Meets World video coming for y'all soon, okay? We got it coming. I think, um, you know, often when you're developing like, um, you know, a show geared towards like teens, et cetera, or young, you know, and that's kind of like geared towards like 
middle school and up basically you know you want to show everyone's always interested when you're younger what's going on with the older characters you know what i mean so that's yeah. why you used to have an older and a younger brother you know and, and we did that so you could get a little bit of both it was really not saying it was all like just decided because we wanted to get certain viewers but a little bit you know what i mean and you and it's also like it's good to have a show sibling relationships you know, so we wanted to show, because it's very relatable to like what it's like to have an older brother and then Cece dealing with what it's like to have a younger brother. So he was a great guy. He's a great, you know, actor. He was really fun. He had a lot of, he was good on the dance floor. So yeah, he was a fun character. Yeah, that's just, that's just like the best way for me to describe Ty. I'm like, he was just fun. Like, I just liked him. He was just really fun. Now, as you mentioned how he was the older brother, let's get into Flynn. Right. What was it? genuinely curious because it reminded me a bit of like when I would watch that so Raven and you know Raven had her stuff and then you know Corey was her little brother and he had his storyline with his right. little friends I am just genuinely curious to know what is it like writing for kids that are that young like people always love the Flynn character because he's just like little and so cute and always kind of got into trouble and whatnot and so then he would give that and again it was to get like younger kids interested in it so that they had someone that they could kind of root for because like the older you know like it's basically like when you're watching you know you assume that like kids are watching this with their younger siblings that they had something that they could relate to basically so he that I mean I'm trying to think how old he is at the time I just saw on Facebook that he like went to prom or went oh, to yeah. prom, et cetera. It's so it's so funny because he was so little. I don't know, he was eight or nine then. So fast, so funny, really good, strong actor for that age, really. I mean, he really could like deliver. He knew exactly like when to flash that grin and whatnot. I mean, I think he's just like a little bit of like, you know, we also wanted to show like, you know, yes, yeah, Cece was a little bit wild, but so was Flynn, you know what I mean? It was just like, that was the nature of like the family and their characters and their relationship, so. Um, Georgia, um, I loved her. I really did love her. I think the main reason I love Georgia so much, <laughs> I live in Georgia, that's the funny thing about it. She reminds me a lot of my father, if that makes sense. She reminds me a lot of my father because Georgia for the particular, she did what she could to support her kids. She would have to work late all the time, do this and then the third. She had a great sense of humor. She reminded me so much of my father and she just wanted the best for her children because when Cece and her mom would go back and forth, it reminded me so much of when me and my dad used to go back and forth. Like we're on good terms y'all, okay? I love my father so much. I love my mother too, but like Georgia really just reminds me so much of my dad. And you can tell she left her kids, she did what she could, but sometimes it just was so hard to get to her children. And I, yeah, I was I was a CC at one point in my life. That point in my life, I was CC. That's part of the reason why her character was just so frustrating to me, because she was me. Oof. I have come a long way, y'all. I have come a long way, but I loved her. Just, just like a nice mom type character. She's actually one of my favorite characters in the show. I think she might be my favorite character. Every now and then, my favorite character always changes like throughout the years of when I watch the show. At first it was Rocky, then it was Deuce. It's Georgia, it's Georgia. She was actually really funny, like. Yeah, she was great. She's a great actor. I mean, we really did want to show like different family dynamics. That Rocky had a two-person household, but a lot of people, a lot of, you know, kids only have a single, you know, parent household. And so we wanted to show that and that that's just, it presents its own sort of challenges. It's also very real. I mean, it's very realistic. I mean, I know the creator really wanted to show like, a very middle class family. You know what I mean? They are not wealthy. They do not have a lot of money. I mean, like yeah. the opposite of Anna Kay and her whole world, which is very rich and like so many people and staff and whatnot. I mean, that's not the majority of the world. You know what I mean? The majority yeah. is like, you know, single households and like two families that live near each other and they kind of have to like help each other and look out for each other's kids and stuff. So we, I mean, that's, we like that. I loved, I mean, I still always loved the whole, like her climbing in through the window. I mean, as Zendaya got taller and taller, it was harder and harder <laughs> for her to like, 
ducking all the time. But I you know. noticed that when I was yeah. watching, I was like, Zendaya, like Zendaya was already tall, like at the like the beginning. And yeah, then, she was already tall, but during that first year, I mean, I, I'm only five four, so she was already taller than me. But I mean, she really shot up, like in that first year. All of a sudden, we're like, oh my god, the costume designer was like, I'm having to buy all new clothes all the time. So, and that's Logan. Logan was just he mess. A mess. He bought the mess to shake it up. And I loved it. He was played by the super duper cute Leo Howard, who is still fine, okay? Logan was just, he was it. The show needed something to like show like the girls are growing. The girls are gonna be dealing with more mature storylines and whatever. And Logan's introduction to the series did that, okay? I shared a lot of my feelings towards Logan in my video I made about Rocky and whatnot. I will have that video link down below. But for the most part, I I just loved what he brought to the show. I was sad to see him go. I'm not gonna lie. I was super duper sad to see him go because the Logan arc was honestly one of the show's highlights okay i was super duper sad to see him go i really did enjoy lil howard's time on this series um he was great but again you know we we bring on characters i mean he still was a guest actor he was still never a series regular the series regular was our main cast of kids and stuff so whenever we found a storyline that excited the writers or we thought that we're like oh people are really responding to this that's when we would bring them back over and over so he was always still a guest star but he was like Again, you really look at like, cause you know how I described it earlier is that you're watching them interact on stage together and they just had like good chemistry. So you're like, oh, this is a really good storyline that kind of matches with like, you know, the age that they are at and how things, you know, work. And we wanted to make it, you know, you're always looking for things that are relatable, you know, for other, for the viewers at home that they're like, oh yeah, I know someone like that or I understand that situation. So that's kind of, that was the plan. Yeah, because I, I felt CC at that one where it's like you had a friend and she had a boyfriend that you didn't like him. Right. I felt CC so hard. <laughs> and yeah. I feel you, girl, even though you make me mad. I, I, <laughs> I, I get you, CC. I get right, you. Right. Now, as we are talking about Logan, I do want to get into how season three was the most mature season of the show. Because season three was where we actually got to see the characters change a lot. Like, they did change a lot from season one to season two. But in season three, it was kind of like a shift in the show's tone. Because season two really did feel the same when it came to season one, when it came to like, you know, the things being overly funny and overly goofy and things like that. But season three, they tend to tone it down a little bit. And that really is just because the characters were getting older. They decided to give them more mature storylines. Like, you know, you still have your typical Disney Channel cheesiness as I like to call it, the cute little Disney Channel charm that is in all the series. But here, the storylines were way more mature and they actually did tone down a little bit on the fashion. I know a lot of people love to talk about the shake it up fashion, but if you notice in season three, it wasn't as super duper over the top as it was in season two and season one. Tinka's outfits were still like over the top, but like these two, okay, okay, okay. So my favorite episode that i wrote one that i remember the most um it was um the dance episode where they had their chance to go for the work and they're running through the tunnel back and the forth. tunnel it up yeah. tunnel it up <laughs> yeah tunnel it up right that because um actually that was like the first episode that i totally came up with the idea on my own and i pitched it to my boss and i was like I know in Chicago there are these series, it's a real thing, they have these series of underground tunnels because they used to were running um, liquor through them during Prohibition. And also because of the weather in Chicago was so extreme, they needed a way to get things and forth. So there is actually a series of underground tunnels. And we wanted, and I was like, I just understand that idea that your first school personal life dance is so big, such a big deal. And they just wanted to do both. And this idea that women, especially like you can have it all, you can have a great career and you can have that. So it was just so funny and also heartbreaking that they were trying to have do both and have them run back and forth, you know, through those tunnels. But like, they weren't getting a good experience in either. Cause that's sometimes how it feels, you know what I mean? It's oh, like, yeah. you know, can I either be super ambitious? And as a woman myself, as a writer, I was always, dealing with that struggle like you're trying to balance 
your work life and your ambitions and me wanting to be a writer and how much effort that all takes as well as having like seeing my friends and having a love life and relationships you know it's a hard balance so I really it was a very meaningful story for me to do and it just I mean it was just so funny that every step of the way it just was never working out for them I also love the Tinka that crazy dress yeah every layer. <laughs> we, I mean our costume designer Jessica Plansky's awesome and she it was a really fun episode to like build that so that you know these layers could keep tearing off and that one by one and then at the end you know how they always kind of dress like you know they thought wonderfully but it was kind of terrible that you know in the end her dress was beautiful i mean we wanted her to be beautiful and that she was like ugh, i hate it it was just funny to she had all the whole attitude she yeah. had all attitude with dudes she was like this is ugly and she yeah. walked away <laughs> totally as I mentioned, Gunther was, I didn't mention this, but Gunther unfortunately was not included in season three simply just because Kent and Duty just wanted to move on and do something else. So Tinka was by herself this entire season, okay? And I think Tinka being away from her twin brother because they were always just like joint at the hip since they were little, that gave her some time to grow as a character. And I mentioned that I've always liked Gunther, but I never liked Tinka until the last season. And I didn't like Tinka until the last season because she actually matured. She actually was able to grow being away from her brother. Because if you guys saw, Tinka ain't have no friends. Rocky, Cece, and Dina to a certain extent were her only friends those were the only people that really kind of tolerated her for who she was and she started to become nicer to them because Gunther wasn't there she realized that she was lonely she ain't had nobody to talk to so she was like you know what let me be nice to these girls and let's see let's see what happens okay like as season three one i love season three by the way you guys can't tell season three was my favorite season of the series they put the girls in more realistic and more scary situations especially the entire losing your job thing and then not getting things that you want and all that stuff breakups friend breakups friend breakups hurt so much y'all and i'm glad that this show did particularly hint on that it they really really do suck they really really do suck okay but like I said, speaking about Tinka, Tinka in season three is not the be the same Tinka that we see in season one. I think Tinka in particular had the best character development because T Tinka in season one would not have given Rocky and Cece a birthday gift, let alone be invited to their birthday party. Okay, she grew a lot that's one of the highlights of season three i love season three if you guys can't tell that was just one of the highlights of the series i really did enjoy that i mean you know again since they are real people and actors and whatnot and it didn't you know necessarily um i don't exactly know i mean i was like a young writer so i wasn't privy to like everything that you know why exactly he left i don't even remember i don't think it was anything dramatic i mean i think yeah. it was just like it was like he wanted to move on and like do something else basically um we have no choice but to like figure out a whole new storyline for us the challenge is like oh they've been known as like a pair what do we do with like just tinka it was always tinka and gunter now it's just tinka we really had to kind of like dig deep and think about like what would how would that change the entire friend dynamic and the show dynamic without him you know what i mean like if there's like a major character who was leaving um it would just obviously change things about tinka and like we wanted to show like what would it look like with the trio of the girls you know where the, they were like the three of them did you remember the episode because i remember obviously the ones i had to write because i was like you know had to write them a little yeah. bit better than the others but um the one where they were all like the same boy and all three of them and he they all thought he liked them yeah, yeah that he was, was 12. <laughs> and then he was really young yeah exactly and we wanted to change the dynamic because now it's always just cc and rocky but then we're like okay tinka needs someone to play off of too so it was kind of sad though like um because you realize like Gunther was like her best friend and like in the show it showed that he went back home and right. it's kind of like she was lonely so she like you know Tinka's mean like she's the mean girl yeah. so. and it's right. like she realized how lonely she was and she was like let me start being nice to these two girls because I, I can't be by myself all the time. <laughs> Right. Yeah, and you can't, you gotta change your ways and stuff. Just because Gunther, they knew he, they loved each other and they were mean together. But if you don't have that, you know, you have to like, you know, figure out how to like get along with everyone else, which is not by being mean. Like, 
Uh, Tyra was great. I mean, she brought in, um, when she came in, you know, obviously we have hair and makeup people for the show, but she obviously come with, came with her own because she's Tyra Banks. And we we're like, oh, God, that's so cool. This is a whole entourage. I mean, that's just how it is with bigger celebrities and stars. Very gracious. She was a fan of the show. I mean, the girls were obviously super excited to Whoa. meet her. I think Alfonso, like, it's just like, I think he was actually also a friend of one of the executives. So, I mean, that's sometimes how it works in Hollywood. It's like, a lot of times, you know, uh, teen shows or kid shows can get guest characters because they have kids. I don't think that was the case with either of them. They don't have kids that it, they were, who watched the show and were fans. And so their kids want them to be, you know, to watch the, to be on the show. So that's why they'll agree to do these guest stars. Yeah, I remember um, her name's Cindy Crawford. I remember right. uh, her daughter's like kind of becoming like a big model. Yeah. She was talking about how excited her daughter was when she found out she was going to be on Wizards of Waverly Place. Yes, yeah, absolutely. That's like what it is. I mean, it, it is a thing where you're like, oh, that's the kids, you know, kids are still kids and it doesn't matter if they're, you know, she doesn't know how famous her mother is, you know, and that's what she watches. And every mom probably still wants to like, you know, make their kids happy. So they kind of get pushed into that stuff. Like, it just has a very, very particular, different feel to it. And, you know, the show did end up getting canceled. And even though the show got canceled, I was pretty satisfied with the way it ended. It was really, really sad. I bawled my eyes out, okay? I was bawling my eyes out, y'all. Because I cried the first time I watched it, like, when it premiered, when the show first ended. I cried then. Years later, I saw the season finale again. I cried again. And then when I recently rewatched it again this year, because I've rewatched this show numerous times, but I barely rewatched that last episode. When I rewatched it again this year, I bawled my eyes out because it really just hit me. Like, we literally just watched a coming of age tale of just some kids in Chicago, okay? People were upset about Shake It Up getting canceled in season three, but I honestly wasn't. It was like watching these characters in this one particular stage of their life and then it was just up to our imagination to figure out what happened with them later because i don't know if y'all knew but shake it up ran for 75 episodes that's a lot season two was ass numbingly long like I, I i would see season three when i was watching the show and i checked on disney plus and i was like wait a minute this is still season two i could have sworn but anyway we spent so much time with these characters like people that's one thing in particular when people complain about a lot of these series getting canceled and things ending and whatnot but it honestly just ended on the right note it ended right when it needed to some things just need to end we don't have to keep stuff going forever and that's okay sometimes things go on for way too many episodes where you can tell the cast is getting burned out okay and i never really got that feeling with this series like it is pretty obvious that the girls yes they did want to move on and do other things but you can tell they genuinely didn't enjoy the type of characters that they were playing but obviously they were growing up now we're getting into the sappy stuff Yay! Okay, so I am, I'm really trying my best not to cry. I, oh my God, don't cry, don't cry. So I'm probably gonna read my <laughs> message that I have for, for right here. Okay, I'm trying not to cry. Why is this show so special to me? This show is one of the things that helped me get through my darkest stage of life. During this time, it was my first two years of middle school. I had trouble making friends and I got picked on a lot. And my family's financial situation wasn't great. My dad had to take up extra shifts. And because of this, I wasn't allowed to do much outside activities. That's why I mentioned why Cece's mother is actually one of my favorite characters. She reminded me a lot of my father at my, that time. And I felt a lot of comfort with her character. Whew. As I said earlier, my dad had to take up extra shifts because I wasn't allowed to do much outside activities, which made me more of an outcast than I already was. And because I was so different, I was an easy target. And something happened that I will not say. And it started happening over and over and over and over. 
and I didn't know what to do. I I went to a really, really bad middle school, y'all, okay? Like, y'all know that scene for the office, I'm not gonna say it, because I don't know if it actually does happen to the school. Y'all cannot quote me on that. Yeah, that, that scene. When I come home, this was the show I always turned on to make me feel better. During Snowmageddon, yes, we had like three of those here in Georgia. I watched this the entire week I was out of school. I even tried to do my Black History Project on Zendaya, and I was so salty. I was super duper salty. Y'all see what Zendaya has done now? They should have let me do my freaking project on her. Anyway, let's go ahead and get back into it. This show was one of the things that made me who I am today. Because it was one of the things that genuinely made me happy. By the way, this was around the same time that I found Cameron Boyce. If you guys know that, if you recently watched the charity stream that we just did, which was emotional. I know not everyone's gonna like shake it up. I am aware of that. I know this show is not for everybody and that's okay. I know not everyone is gonna like what I like. But you wanna know what? I don't care if you don't like Shake It Up because this show helped me. And I will even go there and say that, that this show is one of the reasons why I'm still here on this earth. Yes, I am aware, Shake It Up is not perfect. Nothing on Disney Channel is perfect in particular, okay, y'all? Like, stop being so mean on kid shows. That really gets on my last freaking nerves. I know it's not perfect. Yes, it has flaws. Even though I am a huge fan of this show, there was a lot of things about it that I really couldn't freaking stand. Like, sometimes the gross out humor was just a little bit too much and it really did bother me. But in my opinion, it's a pretty good show in my eyes. And I like it a lot more now as an adult than I did as a kid. Because as a kid, I just saw it as something fun. Just a fun dance show. But now that I'm older and I rewatched it, Shake It Up is much more than just a kid's dance show. It's the coming of age tale of kids in Chicago just trying to find themselves. Because you realize that as you're watching the show, dance isn't even really the main focus. The main focus is just them trying to figure out who the freak they are. Like these past few months of rewatching the series, I really got to see the show for what it actually was, okay? I feel like Disney just really kind of threw that dance element because that was like really, really big at the time. That was when I was going through my entire dancer phase. You can tell that Disney did that to, you know, get the views. But no, like the dances honestly become more and more irrelevant as the series goes on. And the series focuses more on story than it does their jobs. Like, yes, their jobs was a big part of them. But you see how their job actually affected their day-to-day -day lives and began to change them as people. Just because something is aimed at children doesn't mean that adults can enjoy it, okay? Like I said, I'm aware not everyone's gonna like this show. I'm aware that not everyone's gonna like what I like. But if you did enjoy this show growing up, I recommend giving it a nice rewatch, especially the third season, okay? Because when you pay deep attention to it, you realize that the dance aspect of it is actually very irrelevant at a certain extent. And it's just a nice coming of age tale but you really gotta pay attention to it. It's just really nice to see these characters grow. We spent three years of our lives with these characters as the show was on air. And it was very satisfying to see that's how that aspect and that stage of their life ended. And these characters have been in my life for about 10 years now. And I love and I cherish Ingles, every single last one of them. Even Cece, even the Cece freaking Jones. I love her because there would be no shake it up without Cece. I adore her. I'm just really grateful for all these characters. I am grateful for the entire team behind this series. 
I'm just very, very grateful for it all. So thank you so much, Shake It Up. I really do love you. I'm very, very appreciative of you. And like I said, I know the comment section is gonna be filled with people talking about they don't like this show. I don't care. I don't care. This show helped me. I would not be hairy today if it weren't for this series. If you like this video, please make sure you give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to follow me on everything. And we have some last words from Jenny Lee. Is there anything you would like to tell to the pirate ship? Because a lot of them are like aspiring filmmakers and actors and things like that, that really want to get into the entertainment industry. Do you have any like encouraging advice? Um, this is my advice. I, you know, I was in even younger in elementary school. I always loved writing stories. I always wanted to be a writer. My parents, we're not that thrilled with that idea just because it's, you know, an artist's life or a writer's life. It's a, it's not that stable of a job necessarily. You know, I've had a lot of ups and downs in my careers of like good years and then years that were not so good where I was stressed out about work and what was going to be my next job. But um, it's been very gratifying, but Shake It Up really and writing kids television, because during Shake It Up is when I wrote my two middle grade novels called Elvis and the Underdogs. And it was like a, a duology of two books about um, and it was actually when they were doing Dog with a Blog and developing it, they were looking for other talking dog shows. So I had pitched that as a TV show to Disney Channel, but then they ended up doing Dog with a Blog instead, instead of my idea. And then I wrote it. I was like, I had this whole story and I created these characters and I was like, I want to tell it basically because that's what I'm a writer and so I then wrote it as a book and was able to sell it. So I'm just telling you, like, you'll find these opportunities you know, you just never know where you're going to find opportunities, right? You and I have now met because of this, you know, because you, your love of Shake It Up and I have this other book that's coming out and stuff. And so now we're in connection. A lot of it is sort of about, you know, connections that you meet and your passions. So you should just try to explore them. Um, the one thing I will say is that I know everyone and I'm like that too. And when I was younger, I'm like, I want it now. I want it to start. I want it to start. I mean, it's a process. I've been now lucky enough to be a writer supporting myself for over 20 years you know what i mean but like there was a long time in my 20s when i was working every other job because i just couldn't do that i couldn't support myself you know for that so it's like it's good to have your dreams but you also have to like balance real life sort of thing so i i would say there's you need a little bit of patience like it just doesn't mean it's never going to happen and it can happen at any time for any you, you know you got to believe in it and believe in yourself and just keep trying but reading helps a lot and it's not even just reading the books that you always love like if you're into fantasy and you only read fantasy it's good to read other types of books too and it, anything that expands your world view is helpful you know what i mean and then writing about characters that are close to your heart when you're younger it's easier because maybe you don't have as much life experience right now you know or like teenagers don't because they live at home and this is their little world but then you can write about that your personal my first books were all about like my own personal experiences they were like humor essays about my own life because i just you know didn't know that much about the world outside of me and then you'll just get better and better but like reading really does help because it just shows you're like oh i like that book i want to try to write a book like that like i love thrillers I've never tried to write a thriller, but I want to. It's a goal of mine. <laughs> I always offer myself new challenges. I've written kids books now. Now I try. I wanted to write a young adult novel, so I did that. I write for kids TV. I write for adult TV. Like I think it's like you have to be open-minded about like trying different um, things. So that's my advice. Um, like my Instagram, Jenny Lee writes and stuff. Uh, it's mainly about my book stuff, but I do try to you know offer up. Um, some writing advice here and there. And I definitely have people uh, who reach out in the DMs and stuff. I mean, eventually I will get to them. Obviously I can't get to everyone immediately, but I definitely will try to give like writing advice or if people reach out and stuff. Because I mean, someone helped me get into TV. So, I mean, you just have to think about it that way. So not to be preachy, but be nice to people. You don't know how famous they're going to be and how helpful they're going to be. You know, so I very much appreciate you being so gracious that I was late. I was horrified. You know what I mean? I was like, oh my God, she's going to think I'm just like, whatnot. I mean, I'm with, it so rarely happens. So I, I do apologize, but thank you. I've had so much fun talking about Shake It Up with you, thank Nicole. You. So, yeah. I'm happy to be on the pirate ship. Thank you. <laughs> I love you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a good night. Powerpuff girls will just blow your mind. Buttercup like villains three at a time. Bubble 
girls will smile while kicking your butt And buy some will leave them out of their rut Cherish and power puff two of a kind Both wanna save the world before bad times From Townsville, Memphis, New York to LA The power puff girls are just here to stay They coming through and fighting And everyone they're shocking You know no one can stop them all because of 